joins Sky News Live tomorrow morning during First Edition. We have more news coming up in an hour. Now it's back to you, Darren. Thanks, Sharon. Now, my first guest tonight on Valentine's Day is a psychotherapist and relationship coach who's going to explain why relationships are so difficult. Why can we all so often get it wrong? Melissa Ferrari, good evening. Hi, Darren. Now, Valentine's Day, um, is it good because it, uh, you share the love, or is it bad for a lot of people because it reminds them of maybe that the relationship isn't quite what they hoped it would be? Well, I think it does both. And um, for people who aren't in relationships, it can spark for them an experience of, you know, why am I alone? And for others, some people, and particularly at the moment, there's been a lot of surveys done and things, and they're saying, 40% of people don't actually like Valentine's Day and it's because often it puts pressure. It puts pressure on, you know, what am I to do and how am I to show my partner that I love them. And because, of course, we, without getting it all again because it's been hacked, hacked over a thousand times, it is such a commercial time. I mean, roses go from being $5 each to $20 each, all that sort of stuff. So, and it, it really is a massive commercial it exercise, is. isn't it? It is a big commercial exercise and it's got a lot of influence from, you know, America and all of that kind of stuff but I think couples can consciously between the two of them decide something different decide that we're going to make Valentine's a day where we acknowledge our love for each other mm -hmm. and so I think if couples can learn to do that and say to each other this Valentine's Day I am going to do something special for you and I think what's lovely is to do something special that's that you know your partner really really likes so you didn't start out this way, as I understand it. Valentine's Day was meant to be where you sent anonymous cards to unrequited lovers, to people you fancied from afar, and that was your excuse you could actually say, you know, I love you, so and so, and that was it, wasn't it? It was like that, and it's lost that a little. Nowadays it's really become about love mm. and couples, and some people still use it the old-fashioned way, but it is the, mo the focus more is now on the relationship. Mm. Now, we, I mentioned the introduction about the difficulty. Why, and it sounds corny, why are relationships so hard? Is it because of the current pressure? Is it getting harder? Is it because people don't expect that well this is my lot we'll stay together whatever well, I think people come into relationships and you know we have all of the love hormones going through our bodies like oxytocin and dopamine and all of that and so that feels really really good and I think couples have an expectation that that's going to last forever well, it doesn't. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. After a while, you don't have that kind of um, euphoric experience and you more have an experience that comes a, becomes a little bit level. And so you need to, as a couple, recreate those old experiences. Whatever used to feel good in the beginning, go out and do it again. Whether it be go to a particular restaurant, whether it go to a particular hotel, even go into the restaurant and order the same food that you ordered on that very first date. The brain and is going to acknowledge Knowledge. This is an old, an old experience. And we enjoyed it the last time. That's the right. Early time. And you can bring it, that passion back up. A, a, a very wise person once told me, I didn't always um, listen to them, um, that passionate love that you talk about, mm. um, if passionate love doesn't turn into companionable love, then that relationship's not going to make it. That's right. And what you're talking there is about security. People ultimately are looking for safety and security in relationships. And we come into relationships and we bring our histories, the way we were shaped psychologically, relationally, with our parents and people that took care of us. Often there's a lot of misattunements that went on when we were younger. So we come into relationships hoping to have that kind of misattunement fixed with our partner. Mm -hmm. Some people can look at it as a positive, positive thing or a negative thing, but to look at it and think, okay, so maybe there's something here that needs some healing from the past, and conscious couples can use that experience. Now, people say things like you must have, you must have, you know, there must be compromise, you must uh, give a bit and take a bit, but then what about the other argument? They say, well, if, it's ha if it has to be fought for, it's not worth having. Well, it does. I think it does. I think a good relationship does have to be fought for. Mm -hmm. We thrive in good relationships. I think in society we need to put relationships first. There's so, me so much focus on other things like how we go in our work and all of those other kind of things. I think putting your relationship first, which means putting the same energy in to what you're doing at work, where people are doing that so successfully, but in relationships we're not getting it so right. And also, of course, the pressures of the work and finances 
characters. I mean, the, the corny old line that somebody say the bloom goes off the gingerbread mm -hmm. means that you know, the financial situation when you're trying to budget things out is you're not splashing the money around the way you did when you were courting. That can also put pressures on the bedroom, can't it? It does. It puts a lot of pressure, especially with young families. It puts a lot of pressure. I, I deal with couples on a daily basis, and so I see this kind of you know experience going on, and it does put a lot, a lot of pressure. And that's where you need to come back to the actual relationship. If you've got the safety and security of, you know, I know who you are, I have your back, mm -hmm. I'm an expert on you. When you come in from the end of the day and you've got, you're in a bad mood, I know what makes you feel better. We need to become experts on our partner. It's really, really important. Mm. Now, I know you talk about renewing and rejigging the old days, but I shouldn't be saying this on Valentine's Day, but the cruelest relationship joke I've ever heard, uh, a bedroom joke, was the, the woman saying to her partner, what's wrong? Can't you think of anybody either? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well. That is sad, isn't it? Well, I think that's true. I think sometimes people do fantasise. That's the Robert Redford sort of stuff. Yes, you know, and so long as the relationship has a good, secure base, do whatever works. Well, true. Now, the smart thing you said earlier, that idea about going back and reigniting what you had, mm. um, because that will convince both your brains that remember that time we did such and such, and we that's when we did, and we, before we had the kids, or it was when we did this, or when the kids were little, and da da da. That sort of stuff uh, is probably very smart. And it's and it felt good. It really, really felt good. And the brain has registered something very positive and very, very powerful. And then as the relationship goes, we get into the everyday mundane kind of things and but you can even do it at home you know people can learn how to greet each other enthusiastically and it sets up a really nice evening you know when you come home and mum's slamming the cupboard doors because she's had a bad day it usually sets it you know a tone for a, not a great night but if we can decide you know I'm gonna go greet my partner at the door and you know leave leave the leave the dog greet the partner leave the kids behind say you know I love you welcome home now, there's something in, in, in your recent years of work. Um, how has social media changed? Because people, I mean, you see them in, in the elevators, wherever, people are locked on their phones. Mm. Now, if that goes follows through into the home, mm. where you're either glued to the TV set, or you're glued to your iPad, or you're glued to your phone, that ain't romantic. It's not. You have to consciously put your phone down or turn the TV off. To really be successful in relationships, we have to look at each other. The eyes and gazing actually creates an experience of falling in love. I'm sure, Darren, if I looked at you a lot for long enough, I'd fall in love for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and right. so that's what people need to do. Yeah. Look at each other more. Get that experience of I can see who you are. I like who you are. And this lights up all the right parts of the brain. And that experience actually becomes something, a, a sort of rewiring nervous system and the brain. And so it can create a lot more positive relationships. So, so turn off the phone, turn off the TV, those sorts of things. Turn things off. Yeah. You don't have to do it, turn it off all the time, no. but I think we're all guilty of well, it. It's interesting because um, there used to be a, a, a running story about Johnny K and then they used to have a David Letterman saying, oh, he goes to bed with millions of women every night. Now, that's a joke, but the thing was, they're watching television in bed at night, they're not cuddling up to the husband, and that is a recipe for disaster. That's right, and psychologically, you do hold many people in your mind sometimes when it comes to relationships. It's a fairly normal thing, but you need to make your partner feel like they're the special one. Turn that turn that stuff off. All right, now, it's Valentine's Day today, and we talked to you this time last year. Yes. Um, you're sitting there with a huge heart on, around your neck there, <laughs> What did you do as, a, as an expert on Valentine's Day? Well, we came down to Melbourne so that I could be here in the in the uh, um, studio with you because um, I actually live in Sydney. And we actually had quite a quiet Valentine's Day. We've both been extremely rushed the last couple of weeks, extremely. So, so you and your husband just came to Melbourne have a time today time together? The kids are at home. And yeah. so we've just really spent some quiet time together, but doing things that help with that engagement stuff, like looking at each other, turning the phone off. He's great at saying, you know, put the phone down, Melissa, because I love, I love the social media stuff, yeah. love it. <laughs> and so he says, and I look at him and I say, you're right. I'm going to turn it off, I'm going to sit here with you, and I start to feel more passionate about him and the rest. Hmm. <laughs> and on Valentine's Day, you brought him to the studio. I did, he's you here did tonight. That's I good. did. <laughs> but it's good to talk to you again. Thanks for your time. Thanks so much, Darren. Melissa Ferrari.